Spectral skills in Path of Exile have a cool factor that's undeniable. After all, Chris Wilson owes Mathel a small fortune for selling so many Spectral Throw MTX back in the day. And this is because, regardless of the strength of Spectral Throw, it had a coolness factor. You were throwing copies of your weapon. This also means, of course, that you didn't really need MTX, because you got MTX just by changing your weapon. Unfortunately for fans of Spectral Throw, it wasn't very good. For a very long time now, it's been the skill where you'd sink a fortune into it and get almost nothing in return for your time and effort. However, Spectral Throw got a younger, sleeker, and far more powerful cousin in Spectral Helix. Much like Spectral Throw, Spectral Helix kept a lot of the quirkiness of Spectral skills. It still throws copies of your weapons, meaning you can still get that MDX just by changing your weapon. And it also has a lot of really interesting mechanics, as it basically turns your character into a hammered in from Diablo 2. I think that it's no coincidence that Eye of Winter and Spectral Helix were both released right around the time of D2R, and both capitalize on the Frozen Orb and Hammered in aesthetics from those games. So, to start off with, how does Spectral Helix work? When you attack with Spectral Helix, it throws out a spectral copy of your weapon, which then spins around you in ever larger circles. Increases to projectile speed will make it spin faster, reductions to projectile speed will make it spin slower. However, this will not add or subtract rotations. It will always travel for exactly the number of rotations specified on the gem. You can, however, increase the number of rotations by adding a helmet enchant which adds one rotation. Also, much like Spectral Throw, Spectral Helix will damage enemies every 0.3 seconds. This means, as it's spinning around in a circle, if it collides with an enemy's hitbox multiple times at different points in the path, or if the enemy's hitbox is so large that it spends 0.3 seconds traveling through the enemy, you'll hit that enemy multiple times. As a standard rule of thumb, you can assume you'll hit an enemy twice, but on larger hitboxes such as Katava, I saw posts on Reddit claiming up to 8 hits. However, I didn't do any testing on Katava, so I don't know if this is actually the case, or if people were exaggerating a little bit because they saw the boss melt. Now, where Spectral Helix gets the most interesting is the bounce mechanic. If you add projectiles to Spectral Helix, you don't actually add projectiles. Instead, you add bounces. Normally, when a projectile impacts a wall, it simply stops. Spectral Helix, though, will bounce off of that wall. This means that the skill behaves very differently near walls and very differently in enclosed areas than it does in open areas, as you bounce projectiles off of walls to scythe through enemies multiple times, or problematic as you bounce off of a wall and then miss your target multiple times because it's in a little dead zone you've created for yourself. So if you're ever having trouble killing things with Spectral Helix because you're too near a wall or some debris, reposition yourself a little bit and you should have no problem hitting things. This skill behavior is honestly really unique and really interesting. I'd love to see more projectile skills that function in this way, properly bouncing off of walls and being able to ricochet into enemies multiple times for massive damage. Of course, this does mean that if you're in a wide open area, such as an open map, it's maybe not as easy to do damage. Luckily, because Spectral Helix continues to rotate and scythe out into ever larger circles, even if there's no walls in sight because you're fighting on a platform in the middle of space, you'll be able to hit enemies multiple times. I didn't do too much testing on exactly how much projectile speed you need to add before it will no longer hit twice. I also didn't do too much testing on how low your projectile speed can go and how low it would need to go to add a third hit. It didn't really seem to make a difference whether or not I was using slower projectiles or whether I was using faster projectiles and long shot. But if you want to see me test the hit count of Spectral Helix in more detail, maybe make a second follow-up video, then be sure to like this video, sub to the channel, ring the bell, and comment down below letting me know that that's what you want to see. For now though, I've gone over a lot of the ways in which Spectral Helix works. But what sort of mechanical interactions are enabled by this unique behavior? First of all, let's talk about a mechanical interaction that's disabled. You can't use Sniper's Mark with Spectral Helix, because Split completely breaks the skill's functionality. If you hit an enemy with Sniper's Mark, normally small projectiles will split off of the enemy, flying towards nearby foes. If you put Sniper's Mark on an enemy and then hit it with Spectral Helix, the projectiles fly off in straight lines, and it stops spinning and therefore does very little damage. On the other hand, this behavior synergizes incredibly well with an item like the Fledgling, or of course Farshot from the Deadeye. This is because Farshot doesn't actually calculate distance traveled from your player's hitbox. 
it calculates based on the time the projectile has spent traveling. So if you throw a projectile a little bit to the side of the enemy, as it starts to spin around and complete its first rotation, it'll have traveled a very significant distance. All of this distance adds up and can be used to calculate far shot. For this reason, it means that unless you're going to really point-blank enemies, stand directly on top of them, and throw the projectiles directly into them, you won't want to be using something like point-blank. In fact, I wouldn't really advise point-blank with Spectral Helix at all. POB might say it's a DPS gain. In practice, it's very likely to be a DPS loss. One other thing to keep in mind, Spectral Helix has infinite pierces. This means the projectiles can neither fork nor chain. But the upside of this is, if you're trying to hit multiple enemies, such as using Spectral Helix for clear, it will scythe through the enemies infinitely, no matter how many there are. You don't have to worry about running out of pierces. Because increases and reductions to number of projectiles instead apply to bounces, if you're fighting a lot of enemies indoors and want those extra bouncy hammers, I do suggest adding a couple of projectiles via sources such as potentially playing a Deadeye that might not cost you as much damage-wise. On the other hand, if you're in an open area and you want as many projectiles on screen as possible, then time to raise that attack speed because that's the only thing that's going to increase the number of hammers spinning around you. And this brings me to one last point about Spectral Helix. The hammers don't move with you. I know I've been calling them hammers, and I'm using a bladed weapon, so they're not always going to be dealing blunt damage. But damn it, it's hammered in, and I'm going to call them hammers, even if that isn't literally the case for the weapon that I chose. And so what this means is, while you can reposition the helixes by moving yourself and beginning to throw new weapons from a new location, they won't move with you, which means you're not going to be surrounded by a deadly vortex of blades. If you want that, the skill you're looking for is, of course, Blade Vortex. Because it hits multiple times, and because it can so easily leverage Farshot, Spectral Helix is one of the most powerful attack skills in the game currently. It'll take a little bit of getting used to. You don't want to stand directly on top of the enemy, but you also don't want to stand super far away from them. You want to stand at about a median distance, so the enemies hit by your first and or second rotation. If you hit that sweet spot, bosses will melt right in front of your eyes. But at the same time, there aren't really any ways to scale the clear. The clear on a less geared Spectral Helix character will be about as good and also about as bad as on a super geared character, at least once you get to the point where you one-shot trash anyway. Having a little bit more projectile speed will make it feel smoother, as it causes the projectiles to go through their rotations a little bit faster, thus hitting farther away enemies much sooner. But overall, it doesn't change all that much, because you can't add more projectiles. So that's something you should keep in mind if you decide to play Spectral Helix. Personally, I think the skill has a lot of potential, it does pretty much all the damage, and it's great if you're a fan of Spectral skills, or you just like hammered in from D2. I've been playing an elemental claw-based Spectral Helix Raider recently, and been having quite a lot of fun. It turned into an incredibly powerful bossing character, and the clear's a lot better than I expected it to be. I'm going to be talking more about that video in the near future, but for now, I'm curious. Have you ever played Spectral Helix? And if so, what sort of Helix build did you play? If not, are there any synergies that you can think of with the skill that you might want to try out? Let me know all that down in the comments below, and if my build does interest you, then be sure to sub to the channel or join my Discord so that you'll be notified when I upload a showcase for it. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to put them down in the comments below, or join the Discord where you can ask questions, get build help, and hang out with the community. A special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. They're awesome, and they get to show it by having their name on screen in the credits of all my videos. So if you want to see your name here, be sure to check the link in the description. For more general gaming content, check out my second channel, 10 Gaming Thoughts, and if you want a water bottle or a cool shirt, I have a link to my official merch shop in the description. I hope you learned something today, and I hope to see you again sometime soon.